Welcome to this session on reference management. In this session, we will be dealing with the basic concepts of uh, referencing. What is citation, what is in-text citation, and what is both side analysis, uh, what are style manuals, and what are the different uh, subject areas in which these style manuals are mainly used. And uh, we will go on uh, seeing how to create index citation and box site release according to different style manuals, especially APA, MLA, and Chicago. Then uh, what are the pagination according to these three styles, etc. So before directly going into the topic, let's start from what is research. The Cincinnati University defines research as the creation of new knowledge and or the use of existing knowledge in a new and creative way, so as to generate new concepts, methodologies, and understandings. This could include synthesis and analysis of previous research to the extent that it leads to new and creative outcome. See, what is research? It's a creation of new knowledge. How we create a new knowledge? It's by basing onto the existing knowledge we have. So, in research, having the existing knowledge, know about the existing information is very important. It is by basing on the existing knowledge then that we can build up further in our research work. And that is why Isaac Newton wrote in his letter to his fellow scientist uh, Robert Brooks in 1675, if I have seen further, it's by standing on the shoulders of giants. If I have seen further, it's by standing on the shoulders of giants. It is by standing on the already available information or information provided by the giants or uh, different scholars in, in our own fields can we research further, when can we go further. So for a research, we need to have existing information and existing knowledge. Then how can we get the existing knowledge and incorporate them into our research paper, our research work? There are three methods through which we access information. We get information and we include information from other sources to our research paper or research work. First one is quoting. We know what is quoting or what is quotation. It's a word-to-word -word copying of an information without changing anything. The exact copy, the verbatim, word-to-word copy. Then there comes paraphrasing and summarizing. What is paraphrasing? Paraphrasing is presenting ideas and information in your own words. See, paraphrasing is presenting ideas and information in your own words. So here we are not exactly quoting, we are not exactly taking the information, we are taking the information in our own words. How can we paraphrase a content? That's what we are going to see now. There are five steps involved in paraphrasing. First, first one, read the original text until you understand it. So we have to read the original text until we understand it fully. Then note down the key concepts. We have to note down the key concepts. Then after that, write in our own words or in our own version of the text without looking at the original. See, we have already uh, read the original text and understood it and we have noted down the points. Now we have that points with us. And looking onto these points and setting aside the original text, we create in our own words a new text. Then. After that, we compare it with the original one in order to avoid any kind of uh, similarities between these two. And that is how we create paraphrase, how we paraphrase, that's how we paraphrase. And what is summarizing? Summary is a shortened version of a larger reading. In your summary, you state the main ideas in your own words, but specific examples and details are left out. See what is the difference between paraphrasing and summarizing. Paraphrasing is we are taking the exact idea in our own words. But in the case of summarizing, what we are doing here, in the case of summarizing, 
a larger content is summarized into a shorter form and we are using it in our paper. That is the difference between them. Then when can we summarize? What are the instances we have where we have to summarize a topic or a, or a content? We have to summarize or we use summary when a passage from a source is too long to quote or paraphrase. Okay, I think that's clear. Then, when only the main ideas of a source are relevant to our paper. Okay. Then third, third, third instance is when the details in the text might distract or worm or confuse readers. These are the main three instances where we go for summarizing. Okay. Then like the paraphrasing, there are certain steps in the case of a summarizing also. What are they? First, start by reading the text and highlighting the main points as you read. Then, you have to reread the text and make notes of the main points. See, first we have read and highlighted the main points. Then we, we, are, we are reading it again and noting down the main points. And without the original text, we rewrite the notes we have already taken down in our own words. Here, we include the conclusion or the final findings of the work. Okay. Then include the index citation that we will see later. Okay. So far, we have seen uh, what is research. And for a research purpose, we need existing knowledge. And it is by basing on the existing information can we go further in our research. So how can we include the existing information in our research paper? Uh, we have seen that there are three uh, major mechanisms for uh, including uh, an information into our research work. First one is quotation, second one is uh, paraphrasing, third one is summary. And we have seen how to paraphrase and how to summarize. Okay. See, these all are what we are taking information from other sources, from others. We are borrowing the intellectual property of uh, other persons. So when we are taking or when we are borrowing or when we are including the intellectual work of uh, other people, we have to acknowledge that. Don't we have to? We have to acknowledge that. And here comes the role of referencing. So this process of acknowledging the original source is called referencing or citing a source or citation. So there are certain norms which you have to follow when you are doing that. And reference management deals with, or reference management consists of the norms of recording the source and arranging them in the research document. See, reference management consists of the norms of recording the source or acknowledging the source and arranging them in the research document, in our research document, that is reference management. Now we shall see what is a citation in detail. A citation is the way you tell your readers that a certain material in your work came from another source. It also gives your readers the information necessary to find that source again. See, it's a way we tell our readers that a portion of our work is taken from another source. And not only that, if the reader wants to know about that source, or if the reader wants to refer to that particular source, it will help him to locate that source and read it for himself. That is the importance of citation, that is citation. Now, why should we cite a source? Or what is the importance of uh, citing a source? First one, to acknowledge or to give credit to the works of others. We have to cite a document, we have to cite a source in order to acknowledge or give credit to others because it is their work. It's not our work, it is their work. Second one, to help other researchers to easily locate the source for a further reference. As I have already mentioned, if the reader wants to know more about that particular source from where we have taken the information, he can easily locate it through the citation. 
Okay. Then third one, to provide credibility to your work. See, we have seen that as I signaled, so we, are, we are standing on the shoulders of giants. So when we are supporting our arguments with the points of uh, great scholars in the field, it will add credibility to our knowledge. It will add a credibility to our research. So in that case also, citation will help us. Then the last one, fourth one, to avoid plagiarism and maintain academic integrity. See, if you are not citing, if you are not acknowledging the original source and its order, what happens? We are stealing the information, is it not? So that will amount to plagiarism, that will create plagiarism. So the best way to avoid plagiarism is um, citing the source, either quote and cite, either or paraphrase and cite, or summarize and cite. Okay. And these are the importance of uh, citing a source. Now we shall move on to the next one. How to cite a source? How can we cite a source? There are two mechanisms used for citing a source. First one is index citation and second one is work cited list or a reference list. Before we move on to what is uh, index citation and what is a uh, uh, work cited list or reference list, uh, I will introduce to another topic. See, there are certain internationally accredited norms or standards to write a research paper, including how we have to create index citation and how we have to create reference list. And these standardized norms are called style manuals or style guides. These norms are provided actually in this style manuals and style guide. And there are different kinds of style manuals available. I will introduce you to uh, some of the uh, major style manuals. There are Modern Language Association's MLA Handbook, the Publication Manual of American Psychological Association, then the American Medical Association's, of, uh, Association's AMA Manual of Style, then there is Chicago Manual of Style, then Associated Press Style, uh, then there is uh, the Council of Scientific Editors Style, uh, it's shortly called CSE Manual, uh, titled as scientific style and uh, format it is in its ed eighth edition okay these are the main uh, style manuals and there are certain subject areas in which these style manuals are mainly used what are they a pa style manual is mainly used in the field in the subject field of uh, science social sciences behavioral sciences like uh, psychology and uh, mla is mainly used in the field of humanities language and literature and then coming to Chicago, it is mainly used in the field of humanities, history, business, and finance. Then uh, American Medical Association's uh, AMA Manual of Style is of course used in the field of uh, medical science. Then coming to AP Style, it's mainly used in the field of uh, uh, journalism, business, religion, and uh, medical law. And coming to uh, Council of Science Editors, CSC Manual of Style, it's used in the field of science and uh, related fields. Okay. Now, let us come back to index citation. What is index citation? An index citation is a brief form of the reference that you include in the body of your work. It gives you enough information to uniquely identify the source in your reference list. Or in other words, these are indications. Thus, these are indications of the source from where we have taken the information and these indications will lead us to the complete details of the book, book or source which are listed in the reference list or what cited list. See, these are indications that lead us to the original source, that give an indication about the original source. And the details of this original source is, can be traced from where? From the reference list or what cited list. Now you, you might, might have understood what is reference list or work cited list. A reference list contains the information a reader needs to be able to identify and retrieve the works cited in the text. See, a reference list consists of the details of the original source and it is listed in the reference list or work cited list. And their indication is actually given in the in-text citation. I think you have got a got a, a clear picture of about it. And what are the information we have to include in the reference list or work cited list? 
we need to add the information about the author, then the title of the work, publisher or source of the work, then date or year of publication. These are the main elements we have to include in the work cited list or preferences. I will show you an example, then it will become more clear for you. See, the highlighted parts are index citations. It shows that the information that precedes is taken from this particular source. For example, American Psychological Association. It, it is it's taken from that particular source. And how can we know the complete form of the complete source, the title of the work, the publisher, etc., or where can I locate work? It, it can be found from where? From the reference list of work cycles. So this is the reference list. See, in the previous one, the first information is provided taken from American Psychological Association. So how can we find it in the, how can, how can we find the uh, complete information regarding that? Come to reference list, then there, the second one, American Psychological Association. And the title of the book is Stress in America, the State of Our Nation, State of Our Nation. And it is published in 2017. And from this URL, you can really access that information. So this is index citation and this is reference list or work cited list. So far we have seen uh, what is citation, uh, what should we cite a source for, what is the importance of citing a source, uh, how to cite a source and what are the style manuals or style guides. Now we shall see how to create an index citation or how to create a work cited list or reference list according to three major style manuals that are APA, MLA and Chicago. See what is uh, how to create index citation. We have seen that index citations are indications about the source from where we have borrowed the information and it will lead us to uh, the complete details of the source which is, which is uh, listed in the references or work cited list. How to create this uh, index citation? There are two types of index citation. Parenthetical index citation and narrative index citation. What is parenthetical index citation? Parenthetical index citation is given in brackets or parentheses and that's why it is called parenthetical index citation. See the example. In this, the highlighted elements are examples of parenthetical index citation because it is given in parentheses or in brackets. Now what is narrative index citation? In narrative index citation, the citation becomes part of the source and only the date or pagination is given in brackets. And very rarely we use it sometimes uh, the date and pagination also may become part of the source. In this example, the highlighted part, look the highlighted parts. Yang et al. Analyze the relationship between authors' tags in the contribution list, uh, list and their position in the bylines. See here, uh, the index citation. Index citation uh, means the name of the author and year has become part of the sentence itself. That's why it's called a narrative index citation. Sometimes we the year also may become part of the narrative. Then we can omit the uh, parenthesis. We can omit the brackets. Different style manuals follow different systems for citation, including index citation. APA, MLA and Chicago follow author date citation system. And Chicago besides author date citation system also follows notes and bibliography system. Then coming to AMA, it follows numbered reference system. What is bibliography we will see uh, later. In the number reference system, in the place of index citation, uh, numbers 1, 2, 3 are given in superscript and that will indicate the sources uh, which are listed in those same number at the reference list or a work cited list. That is the difference between all the date system and the number reference system, etc. Okay. Since APA, MLA and Chicago follow all the date citation system, uh, we shall see that in detail. In the author date citation system, the index citation is composed of the surname of the author and date of publication. 
and in some cases page number is also used when a specific page when a content is taken from a specific specific page or paragraph etc so mainly the author date citation is composed of surname of the author and date of publication and page number if needed i think that is clear we shall go to an example of a author date citation system used in see this the only difference between these two styles is that there is a comma in between the surname and the date in APA and that comma is not there in the Chicago. Suppose if the publication date is not known or if it, is, if it cannot be found in the source, how can we, cite, uh, can we write the index citation? In that case, we will write n dot d dot, which stands for no date. And this is the same in both the APA and Chicago. See here, uh, there is a comma after the name of the author in both cases. Suppose, suppose if you are citing uh, from a specific part of a source, how will we indicate that? This is an example. See here in the case of APA, in order to indicate the page number, they use small letter P and a dot. And if there are more than uh, one page, it indicates it is indicated by two small P's. And there are difference in the case of uh, uh, chapters when we are in, in including chapters. Uh, APA use the full letter, the full uh, letter chapter, and uh, uh, Chicago uses only the short form. So far we have talking about only APA and Chicago, then what about MLA? MLA also uses all the day citation system, but with a, a simple difference. And in MLA, instead of uh, the date of publication, they use the page number or the, the portion, the number of the portion. If it is a chapter, it's a chapter, or if it's a paragraph, it's a paragraph. So that is the only difference. You can see this in from this example. See, when writing as parenthetical index citation, uh, it uses uh, the surname of the author, the, then the page number. And if there is no page number, we simply use the surname of the author itself. In narrative citation also, it is the same. Instead of the uh, date of publication or the year of publication, we use the page number. This is another example, comparing uh, the three uh, style manuals. So you can uh, see the difference from this exam itself, what differentiates between APA, MLA and Chicago in the case of uh, index citations. So far we have been seeing how to create index citations of the sources with one author. Now we shall go further. How to create index citations with the multiple authors. Here we can see that as per MLA and the APA style manuals, when there are three or more authors, they use the expression et al. It, it can also be spelled as et al. Uh, it's a Latin word and that means and others. But as per Chicago, it is used when there are four or more others. The conjunction uh, and is used uh, in the symbolic formats, ampersand in the APS style and uh, it is spelled as such in the MLA and Chicago. If you are borrowing an idea from more than one work, how will we write the index citation? This is an example. Here it is the same for all three four formats that we separate the citation of the works with a semicolon. Suppose if the work does not have an order, how will we create the index citation? In that case, we include the title of the work and year of publication in the index citation. See the examples according to uh, these three different formats. So in the case of uh, uh, citing a book, the title of the book is italicized in the case of APA and if it is a case of a um, magazine article, journal article, etc. or a chapter of a book, etc. we will put the title of the article, title of the chapter, etc. in a uh, quotation marks. And coming to uh, Chicago, we can write the short form of the title without omitting its first word. That is important. We can use the short form of the title but without omitting its uh, 
first one. And it is same in the case of uh, uh, MLA also. Now, where can we place the in-text citation in the text? Where can we place the in-text citation in the text? It is placed, it is placed immediately before the closing punctuation mark of the borrowed material. It is placed immediately before the closing punctuation mark of the borrowed material. It is evident from this examples. The second one is an example of a uh, narrative index citation and uh, the third one is an example of a narrative citation where the year is given in the, in the narrative itself. Then coming to the last three ones. See, these are the exam example of uh, including index citation in the case of quotations. Here we have to understand one thing. There are two types of quotations. First one is short quotation and second one is long quotation. What is short quotation? Short quotations are direct quotation which has only less than 40 words. At the previously uh, seen example, the last three ones are ex actually examples of a short quotation because, because that contains only less than 40 words. Suppose if there are 40 or more words in the quotation, that is called a long quotation. And when we are citing, when we are using a long quotation in our text, it is placed as well as the index citation is placed uh, in, in, in a way different from that of uh, the short quotations. You can see that it from this example. Long quotations are given in the text as intended half an inch from the left margin without quotation marks. See that is important. If we are quoting from a text and which that if the text contains more than 40 words or 40 words, what we will do? The entire block is placed in the text half an inch intended from the left margin without quotation marks. In the case of a short quotation, we use quotation marks. But in the case of long quotation, since we are placing as a block and separating it uh, uh, half an inch intended from the left margin, we do not use quotation marks. And index citation is placed immediately after the closing punctuation. In the case of short quotation and other texts, we uh, place the index citation immediately before the closing punctuation. But in the case of long quotation, we place the index citation after the closing punctuation of the long quotation. Now we shall move to the next one. How to create a reference list or work cited list. Here, a confusion can occur. What is the difference between a bibliography and a reference list? Okay. In the publication manual of American Psychological Association, we read, a reference list cites works that specifically support the ideas, claims, and concepts in the paper. In contrast, a bibliography cites works for background or further reading, and may include descriptive notes. What is the difference? In the case of reference list or works cited list, we include the details of only those sources which we have used in our paper or which we have cited in our paper. But in the case of bibliography, besides the sources we have uh, cited in our paper, we, we include other sources which are useful for background information and further reading of the reader. That is the difference. Now, when we are creating the reference list entries, what is the title to be given to that particular page? It has to be in a separate page after the uh, body of the text. And what is the title should be given to this particular page according to these three different style methods. APA proposes to use the title references. In the case of MLA, it proposes to write the title as work cited. And if there is only one, one work, work, work to cite, uh, we can write as a work cited. And coming to Chicago, we can use either references or works cited as title of the page. Now, how the entries are to be arranged in the page. 
as per MLA, APA and uh, Chicago, the entries are to be arranged as per the alphabetical order of the surname of the author. Then we have to apply hanging intent. What is hanging intent? In the case of hanging intent, the first line will be aligned to left and all the subsequent lines will be intended half an inch from the left margin. That is hanging intent. So this hanging intent is to be used when we are entering the entries in the box cider list or reference list. Okay, then uh, as for MLA, Chicago and APA, there has to be double space both within and between the entries. And we need not give serial number to the entries listed in the box cider list or um, reference list as per these three uh, formats, APA, MLA and Chicago. This is an example of uh, references. See here, it is arranged in the alphabetic order of the surname of the author and uh, every entry is given in the hanging intent. Then there is double space between, between and within the entries and no uh, serial number is given also. So this is an example of uh, writing the reference list entries. Okay. Now we shall see some examples of uh, uh, how to write the uh, reference list entries. In the case of a book, uh, what is the basic format? for writing the reference list entries. See the example. Here you may have noticed one thing. Uh, in the case of APA, in the title, only the first letter of the title is given in capital letters. Only the first letter of the title is given in capital letters. In all other cases, uh, for writing the title, they use title case. Title case means um, all the major words of the, all the first letter of the major words are given in capital letters. In the case of AP, it's different. And uh, uh, when writing the name of the author according to APA, uh, they use the surname of the author, but after that, only the initial of the rest of the words, are, rest of the names are included. But in the case of MLA and Chicago, uh, the full name, of, of, the full form of the rest of the names have been included, but in the case of APA, only the initial letters of the subsequent names, or whether it is middle name or first name, only the initial letters of uh, the those rest of the names are used. This was a case of uh, uh, writing the entries in the work cycle list or reference list when there are uh, when there is only one order uh, for the source. But if there are more than one order or multiple orders, how will we write the work cycle list entries? As per Chicago and MLA. When there is more than one author, only the name of the first author is inverted and the name of the other authors are given as it is, as it is. But in the case of APA, only the last name of, name of all the authors is given followed by initials. And as per Chicago format, when there are four or more authors in the index citation, we use the expression eta. But when the same is listed as reference list entry, all the name of the authors are to be given. And the same is the case uh, according to APA also. As for APA format, when there are up to 20 authors, when there are, are up to 20 authors, write the last name of all the authors followed by the initials. And before the name of the 20th author, use an ampersand. And when there are 21 or more of this, when there are 21 or more of this, after the name of the 19th order, insert an ellipsis, that is three dots, and then add the final order's name. Okay, I think that is clear. Now we shall, now we shall move on seeing some more examples. See, uh, we cannot buy heart all these things. We cannot buy heart all the uh, formats, uh, as we are seeing in these examples. But there are many ways to uh, refer to. We can either buy the uh, books which we are following of APA, MLA and Chicago or, or anything. Or there are uh, citation creators, online citation creators. And there are uh, reference management softwares that will automatically create uh, index citation as well as reference list entries for us. So uh, I am just giving you, uh, I am just giving you these examples for your awareness. Uh, what are the elements to be included in the index citation and what are the entries to be uh, included in the reference list, etc. 
I am just giving you a basic knowledge, basic knowledge about the concepts, basic concepts we are using in index citation, uh, reference list of cycles and so these are not for by heart. We can refer uh, to anything. Uh, even from the websites of uh, each style manuals, we can get the basic understanding about the, the basic format uh, when we are using uh, sources of a uh, single author, multiple author, edited book or translated book uh, or um, journal uh, article or a chapter of an edited book, etc. These all are available. Uh, I'm just giving you an information, that's all. So we shall see some more examples. This is an example of an uh, edited book, then second one is an example of uh, translated books, um, then coming to chapter uh, in, in an edited book. If you are uh, quoting from a, or if you are paraphrasing or taking information from a uh, chapter of an edited book, how we have to include this. In the case of MLA, AP and Chicago, in that case, we include the, first we will write the name of the author of that particular chapter. Okay, author of that particular chapter, then uh, the title of the chapter, not the title of the book, the title of the chapter. And after that, we include the title of the book, then uh, the name of the editor, then uh, the publication information and page number, what, what, from, from which pages we have taken the information. Okay. Coming to journal article. If you are referring from a particular journal article, how will we include it? It is the same case as in the case of a uh, chapter uh, from an edited book. We will write the name of the author of the article from where we have taken the information, then the title of the article, then uh, the title of the journal, followed by its volume number, its issue number, then uh, the date of publication, then the page from where you are found. And in the, if it is taken from the from a um, database or something, we will include the name of the database and the URL or DOI. In the case of dissertations, thesis or dissertations, this is how we uh, write the reference list or work cited list entry. If it is a web content, if it is a web content also, it is more or less the same as in the case of uh, journal articles. First, we write the uh, name of the author, then the name of the article, then uh, the name of the uh, website, then followed by its URL or a DOI and uh, uh, the date of publication, electronically public, published date. I already told you, uh, this is not for by hearting. I'm just giving you some basic, some basic understanding and we stop with that and we move further to uh, the pagination, how we arrange the pages in our research project according to these three style manuals. Okay, uh, first APA. APA proposes the style of two types of uh, research works. First one, uh, professional paper, professional paper, paper which are intended for publication and then uh, student paper. Student paper means the assignments of the students that are uh, submitted to the instructor or uh, the faculty, etc. So these are the two examples, main examples APA provides to us. How should be the title page of a professional paper? This is an example. According to APA, in the title page of a professional paper, it should include the paper title. And how to write the paper title? We need to capitalize the major words of the title, then center it and type it in bold font. Okay. Then the name of the author. If there are more authors, name, write the name of all the authors. Then author affiliation. Then comes author note. That is the additional information about the author including the contact details. Okay. And it can be arranged in a separate paragraphs. Then we have to note one thing. There is a running head at the top. That is at the header. And it is aligned to the left in the header. What is a running head? It is an abbreviated version of the paper title and it appears at the top of the every at top of every page then from the title page itself we have to indicate the page number now what should be the order of the page according to uh, apa in a professional paper first the title page we have already seen the example of the title page then the abstract followed by keywords the next page should be 
the page for abstract and it should be followed by the keywords. The abstract and keywords are included in the second page. Then from the third page onwards, we write the body of the paper and uh, uh, write the title on the first line of the first page of the text in title case. Title case means all the major, uh, all the letters of the major words are uh, in written in capital letters. And it should be in bold and centered format. And the text, the entire body of that paper should be left aligned, double spaced paragraphs with first line of each paragraph intended by half an inch from the left margin. Okay. Then comes the references. References means references in re or work cycle list entry. And uh, there are two ways to include footnotes. Normally, footnotes comes at the bottom of the page, at the footer of the page. Uh, it can be automatically default arranged by the word processing software. We can, you, most of us knew, knew about that. But if you are not writing the footnote at the bottom of the page, you can include it at the end of the paper after the page of reference. Okay. Then comes tables. Tables and figures we normally embed within the text itself. But it can also be written, uh, it can also be included after the reference page or footnotes page. Okay. Then comes appendix. And this is a format of uh, order of the pages as per uh, AP. Then coming to student page. How should be the title page of a student paper? Paper title. It is in title case centered bold. Author names. Author affiliation. Author name means the name of the student. Okay. Then author affiliation. Then course number and name. Course number, a colon, there is the name of the course. After that, the name of the instructor whom to whom this project or this paper is submitted. Then assignment due date. This is a format of a, a student title page. Now, what are the font that should be used in a, according to APA? There are two types of fonts: uh, sans serif fonts and serif fonts. Sans serif font means uh, fonts which does not have a, uh, a decorative element at the uh, edge of the letters. Uh, and uh, when there is a decorative element, like in the case of Times New Roman, at the end of the letters, it is called a serif fonts. Historically, uh, sans serif fonts are used in uh, online works and uh, for printed work, serif fonts are used. But APA proposes to use uh, both sans serif and serif fonts uh, but it is only that it should be in a readable format. Okay. And uh, it proposes certain examples also. A APA supports using uh, sans serif fonts such as 11 point Calibri, uh, 11 point Arial, or 10 point Lucida sans Unicode. And uh, sans serif fonts such as uh, 12 point Times New Roman, 11 point Georgia, or normal 10 point computer model. Then coming to line space. According to APA, double space the entire paper, including the title page, abstract, text, headings, block quotations, reference list, table and figures, notes, and appendix. So the complete work has to be double spaced as per APA. And the only exceptions are uh, uh, in the case of footnotes. Uh, in the footnotes, we have to uh, follow the default format in the word processing software. Uh, text within the tables and figures also can be uh, used in single space, used with a single space. Then what about the margin? In the case of uh, giving margins to the paper, use one inch margins on all sides. That's the bottom left and right of the page. And for binding material, if you are binding a particular material, uh, 1.5 inch can be given at the left margin. Regarding paragraph alignment, align the paragraph to the left and do not uh, justify, you know, do use the justification option. And intend the first line of the each paragraph 0.5 inches, so half an inch from the left margin. And in that case, use the tab key and do not press the space key if you are typing on a uh, word processing software. And that is the case with the paragraph alignment. 
uh, the only exception in this case is when we are writing abstracts. So in the case of ab abstract, uh, we, would, we did not indent the first line of the abstract. It can be uh, aligned to the left. And in the case of long quotation, the uh, entire uh, block of quotation is already uh, placed half an inch indented from the left margin. And uh, the first line of first paragraph need not be indented. But if there are more than one paragraph in the quotation, from the second paragraph onwards, the first line of a second paragraph onwards has to be intended again half an inch from the um, already existing place. That is the exception. Then what about the heading levels? There are five levels of heading in APA style. Uh, it says that do not label the headings with uh, numbers or letters or do not add blank lines above or below headings even if the heading falls at the end of the piece. That's important. And uh, APS says that we need not uh, include the title in introduction uh, in the body of the paper because it's already uh, known that the first uh, first paragraph is or first play, uh, portion is the uh, introduction of the text itself. Then place uh, section labels like abstract, reference, appendix. We have already seen that. This is an example of uh, how the five levels of headings have to be written. You can understand it from the um, picture itself. Now we shall move on to MLA. How should it be the pagination or a page setup according to MLA format? In the case of MLA, when we are choosing the phone, it proposes that any readable phone can be used, but with the phone size between 11 to 13 points. And it also says, use the same typeface and type size throughout the paper. Then regarding the text, align the text to the left and do not justify the lines of the text at the right margin. Okay, it is same in the case of MLA. Then uh, turn, turn off the automatic hyphenation, that means do not break the words. Then double space the entire research paper, including quotations, notes and the mix of box items. Indent the first line of paragraph half an inch from the left margin and uh, also indent block quotations of half an inch. Then leave one space after a period or other including punctuation mark. After the punctuation mark, leave one space. How should it be the title page of uh, uh, a research project according to MLA? Uh, according to MLA, we do not include any title page to the paper. It says that if the instructor demands you to uh, make a create a title page, create a title page according to that instructor's instructions. That is what MLA says. And in all other cases, they propose us to write the create the first page as it is. This is the example. Here, see, at first we write the name of the author that is left aligned. Then after double space, uh, the name of the professor or the instructor, then uh, the title of the course and its number, then the date of uh, presentation or the date of submission of the paper. Then after that, uh, the title of the page is given, but it is not in bold format, but it is in title case. Uh, then the body of the text begins. See, at the header, in the case of APA, we have a short form of the title, but in the case of MLA, at the header, what we have to write? We have to write the surname of the author followed by the page number. That is the difference. Another thing is that uh, MLA proposes to not, is not to italicize or underline the title and do not use any period after the title. Okay. And coming to the body of the text, begin the text on a new double space line after the title intending the first line of the paragraph half an inch from the left margin then number all pages consecutively throughout the research paper in the upper right hand corner half an inch from the top and flush with the right margin started from the first page itself uh, type the other surname followed by the space we have already seen that then place the tables and illustrations as close as possible to the 
part of the text to which they relate then regarding note when we are uh, in mla we can include notes but at the end of the body of the text this is how we include the notes in a um, mla format then regarding the list of works cited how should we write the works cited list yes, as per mla see it appears at the end of the paper uh, in a new page after the notes then center the heading works cited in an inch from the top of the top of the page if the list contains only one entry make the heading work cited we have already uh, seen that double space between the heading and the first entry double space the entire list that also we have seen use hanging indent for each entries in the list that is already evident then regarding the heading style how should be the heading style in the case of apa they have clearly given instructions regarding how should how should be the five levels of heading b but in the case of mla it says that we can use the default setting of uh, heading levels as per the uh, word processing software we use that is what mla says in the body of the text the heading should be uh, aligned to the left not center or indented and include a line below and above the heading for more readability and usually uh, mla says to avoid any kind of uh, um, number or letter to designate the heading levels and uh, if it is given by the, if it is instructed by the uh, instructor we can include that coming to chicago here too the old x the old work is to be double spaced and avoid extra space or blank lines between paragraphs and use hanging indent for references and entries then regarding the alignment uh, the whole text should be left aligned and not justified um, the word should not be broken through hyphenation etc uh, one inch margin at the four sides then first line of every paragraph is intended from the left margin regarding the title um, do not use full capital or title full capital for titles that is the only instruction they gave then regarding headings um, each heading should be left aligned uh, do not use full capital uh, use title case and not periods at the end of the title or oh, sorry headings uh, heading levels can be set using the default setting of the word processing software okay that's all about the chicago style manual and this is all what i want to convey to you uh, see we have started from uh, the definition of research there we have seen that in order to uh, do our research or in order to uh, continue with our research we need to have a existing or background knowledge we have to include uh, lots of information into our research work then how you can include uh, other information or any other uh, information from other sources in our research work uh, we have seen that through three ways quotation paraphrasing and summarizing then uh, we have seen come to the we have came to the important part that is uh, uh, when we are including information from other sources we have to acknowledge them and that is what is called referencing okay and in that we have seen how to uh, cite a source what is citation and how to cite a source there are two mechanisms index citation and the work cited list okay in between we have seen what are the different style manuals and what are the subject areas in which these reference manuals are used then uh, we have seen what is index citations how to create index citations as per mla ap in chicago then what is reference list or work cited list entry and how to uh, create work cited or reference list entries as per mla ap in chicago and then what should be the page format what should be the page setup according to these three style manuals and here we end as i have already mentioned to you we cannot by heart anything any any of this uh, there are lot of ways uh, to refer to them either we can uh, buy these style manuals or we can uh, refer to the websites of this uh, uh, style manuals I, i have included the links of the websites in the description then uh, there are uh, many online uh, citation creators which will provide us with uh, uh, automatic citation 
I mean, we are only we need to give the information or the name of the author, name of the title. If it is a website, they will automatically uh, provide you with all this, and will they will give a final list of citations um, in this online citation creators. And uh, I have also included the uh, links of some of the online citation creators at the description. Then, most of all, there are uh, reference management softwares, uh, Sotero, um, Mendeley, Proquas. Um, paper pile etc and uh, I have listed them in the reference also you can um, learn any of this reference management softwares that will automatically create index citation as well as reference list for you so uh, what I want to convey you to, uh, is only that you must be aware of the basic concepts what are what is citation what is index citation what is what cited list and what are the elements or information to be included in the index citation and the work cited list that's all okay thank you and if you have a, uh, any queries or any comments regarding this please uh, give them in the comment box and with that i uh, complete my session thank you thank you very much for hearing